We're in Bangkok, the capital of Thailand. This morning, in a downtown photo studio, a leading brand of Slimming Tea is preparing its new advertising campaign. The brand's new emblem is the 25-year-old supermodel, Poi Trichata. Hold it higher. Poi started her career seven years ago. Today, she is one of Thailand's most famous models. She's a professional. She knows the most flattering camera angles. And that really helps us for the shoot. I take great care with my appearance. I can represent any kind of product. So I really have to take care of my body. Forty-eight kilograms for one meter seventy-one and dream measurements of eighty-four, sixty, ninety, which regularly land her on the cover of magazines. But Poi wasn't always this beautiful young woman. Just nine years ago, she was a man. Here she is, a little boy. That was before she decided to undergo sex reassignment surgery. I have no explanation for this. I grew up with a girl's heart in a boy's body. I can't say why, but I've always felt like a woman. I tried to be a man, but it was like torturing myself. Did I have to continue torturing myself to please others? Some people tell me I'd be better as a man. But why should I force myself? Everyone is free to do what they want. Poi is what we call a katoi here. A woman born, by mistake, in a man's body. The Thais use this term to designate both transsexuals who have undergone surgery, like her, and transvestites. For Western tourists, Katoi are often reduced to this image. That of the lady boys, the men-women who prostitute themselves in the red-light districts of the big cities. It's even one of the clichés of sex tourism. But this is only a very marginal aspect of what Katoi are really like in the country. Because here, most people lead perfectly normal lives. And all you have to do is take a stroll and you'll come across them on a street corner, on a restaurant terrace, or at a supermarket checkout. Even on television, you'll find hosts dressed and made up like women on almost every channel. There are an estimated 200,000 transsexuals in Thailand, 20 times more than in France with the same population. So why are there so many of them? How are they accepted by society? How far are these men willing to go to become the perfect woman? Dive into the mysterious world of Thailand's third sex. In Thailand, being Katoi does not prevent you from holding an official position. We're in Wat Pat Hum Wanaram, a small town of 10,000 inhabitants 40 kilometers from Bangkok. Every morning, Cop starts her day with a touch of makeup. That's the way I am. I love beauty. And at work, I don't want to look horrible. I don't think it's a good thing that my fellow citizens see me with an ugly face. So I add a little color and frankly, some would do well to do the same. Here. Cop is an important person. 
Two years ago, he was elected mayor of his town, with over 60% of the vote. His work uniform is provided by the administration. And you didn't ask them for a skirt? I never asked them. That's fine. I kind of feel that my behavior doesn't match the uniform. So I don't want to break the rules. I'm already very grateful to the administration for accepting me as I am. Since adolescence, Cop has been convinced that he is a woman, imprisoned in a man's body. In his living room, which doubles as the town hall, he has hung a photo of himself 20 years ago. Dressed as a girl, he partied every night. But today, Cop has become a respected civil servant. Hello, this is what Padham Wanaram Municipality. This is the mayor speaking. This message is for motorcycle cabs. You must come in person to fill in the forms. Hello. Sit down. The mayor is a katoi, but that doesn't diminish his authority. You see this photo you brought me? It's too big. That's not a passport photo. It has to be like that. Yours doesn't fit. Look at the others. We see him everywhere. He sets up roadblocks to combat drug trafficking. He helps residents during floods. He also catches snakes. Pythons, he can do anything here. Do you think this is a boy or a girl? It's hard to say. Maybe both. He has a feminine side, caring and helpful, and a masculine side, thanks to which he can cope with any situation. Cop doesn't seem to bother the village bonzes either. In Buddhism, transsexuals have nothing to do with what happens to them. In fact, she is the victim of a curse. We Buddhists believe that if we misbehave in a previous life, if we transgress Buddhist teaching by committing adultery, then we are condemned to be reborn as Katoi. That's what we believe? I'm cursed because of one of my past lives. I used to be an angel. I was unfaithful and immodest, so I was punished and sent back to that body. In Thai society, the phenomenon of the third sex has become so much a part of everyday life that an astonishing beauty contest is held every year. It's the election of the world's most beautiful transsexual, Miss International Queen. Broadcast on television, the competition set new audience records. Last year, over 20 million Thais watched the event live. But it was this Korean woman who won. So this year, Thailand is determined to take its revenge with a shock candidate. Her name is Sammy, she's 21 and she's a communications student. Like a true miss, she undergoes intensive training to be ready for D-Day. As you walk, try to emphasize your curves as much as possible. It's important for people to see your curves on the catwalk, so really show them off. Okay, go ahead. Today is Sammy's last rehearsal. These two personal coaches teach her how to walk like a supermodel and behave like a real woman, down to the smallest gesture. Turn around. Yes. Let go. 
I consider myself to be an authentic Thai woman. I'm going to wear the traditional costume, the sarong, and show what makes Thailand so unique. I'm impatient, very impatient, but I'm afraid of an accident and making a mistake or my costume coming off. I'll really have to be careful. The most dreaded test of the competition is the swimsuit parade. This is where the contestants are graded. Kwong, the choreographer, has come up with a little staging. Sammy will have to tear off her scarf to reveal her bikini. You're beautiful, you're already very beautiful. Now you have to bring out the joy. It's the thing for parading around in a swimsuit. You have to pull the scarf off with a sharp tug. Don't hesitate. Yes, it has to be fluid for the audience. And once you've removed it, lift your head and smile happily. Just like that, okay? We don't have Miss International Queen from Thailand about four years. And so uh, we knew that uh, we we, we knew that if she can win, the all the ladies' boy in Thailand will, like, she will be a good example for the Thai lady boys. The competition will take place in Pattaya. It's Thailand's largest seaside resort. Every year, it welcomes 7 million tourists from all over the world. The election will take place in one of the city's institutions. The Cabaret, Tiffany. With its Las Vegas-style facade and Rococo decor, this is the world's biggest transsexual show. It features up to 60 artists on stage. But make no mistake. All these dancers were born men. The show attracts over 500,000 people every year. At the end of the show, you can approach the artists and even leave with a photo, for a small tip. Meeting the third sex, tourists love it. It's very fantasy, just like the name Tiffany, yes, and the very bling bling, and the people is very beautiful. We know they're lady boys, some of them, and uh, they give uh, complex by the grace and uh, their activities even uh, to uh, some of the best behaved ladies. But tomorrow, the Tiffany's dancers will make way for the candidates in the election for the world's most beautiful transsexual. The contestants arrive at the cabaret. They come from some 20 different countries. For these young transsexuals from all over the world, Thailand is El Dorado, a place where discrimination against the third sex does not exist. In their own countries, some of these candidates have to live their transsexuality in secrecy. Like Margaret, the representative from Lebanon. Jamila, Miss Sri Lanka, or Malaika, from India. Here, in front of a Thai audience, the girls can let their hair down. To set themselves apart from their competitors, some of the contestants chose to wear devastating outfits. Like the Philippines. Or Nigeria. And in a slightly different genre, Germany. There's even a competitor to defend the colors of France. That's the red, white and blue suit. So we're trying to make a national costume that's a bit chic, a bit of a departure from the basics. Estelle is 38 years old and has come from Bourges to take part in the competition. For Sammy, the Thai candidate, the competition will be tough, but she has an advantage, she's playing at home. 
I think Thai people all over the country will be behind me because I represent them. I'm going to do my best to represent Thailand to the world on the Miss International Queen 2011 stage. On the Cabaret Grand Stage The official photo session will be an opportunity for the candidates to observe each other. Estelle, the French woman, assesses her Asian competitors. The costume is pretty, but morphologically, we're not at all the same. So it's clear that at this level, they're very small, very thin, very slim. And then they have surgery. I don't know if it's necessarily aesthetic, but whatever. At least, that seems to be their vision of aesthetics. I don't think it's always very aesthetic to have a chin, a la Tutankhamun. In the shadow of Sammy, a little man who never leaves her side. He's her personal hair and makeup artist. And he, too, is already beginning to spot potential rivals. Some foreigners are really pretty. I look at all the candidates. I have to keep a close eye on them. This way, I'll be able to adapt my makeup as best I can and make sure Sammy wins this contest. Verdict, in three days' time, on the evening of the final, for millions of ties, victory is a matter of national pride. But the fascination of an entire country with Miss Transsexual sometimes has surprising consequences for society. We're in Isan, Northeast Thailand. This rural region is one of the poorest in the country. Here, the vast majority of inhabitants live from rice cultivation. And yet it was in the heart of this remote province, in the small town of Kampang, that a secondary school decided to officially recognize the existence of a third gender at school. The school has 1,300 students. In the courtyard, a group of teenage makeup fans. They are between 13 and 15 years old and already behaving like Katoi. <laughs> They're all fans of TV's Miss Transsexual pageants. I want to be as pretty as they are. And I'll do anything for it. Even plastic surgery. It's good to show that we Katoi can compete with women. We can be more beautiful than women. All you need is self-confidence. At Camping Middle School, 5% of male students already consider themselves to be Katoi, i.e. a total of around 50 boys. This morning, 18 of them gathered in front of our camera. <laughs> Who among you would like to change sex? <laughs> At the age when teenagers are usually sexually determined, these 11 students, more than half the group, say they're already ready to do anything to become women. In 2009, the number of Katoi in the establishment led management to make a decision that took the whole country by surprise. The college has built special third sex toilets. A first in the country, a logo was even invented for the occasion. Half man, half woman. And it was this teacher who came up with the idea. We did this because we're very concerned about the rights of all our students, of the Katoi, as well as the others. 
The Katoi students didn't feel comfortable in the boys' toilets. They teased them and pinched their bums. And they didn't dare go to the girls' bathroom for fear of being embarrassed. It makes our lives easier. Now we have our privacy. No one else uses their toilets. Tem is 13, and last year he started wearing makeup. The college allows it, as long as you keep your hair short and don't wear feminine clothes. I'm a girl, but I was born in a boy's body. Some people make fun of me. They tell me I'm a woman living in a man's body. Do you care about that? I don't mind, because it's true that I'm a woman. Tem is the only Katoi in his class. Well, almost. This is her Thai culture teacher. She's very pretty. But it looks like she's wearing a wig. And she talks a little too loudly. Miss Srinat is the school's only transsexual teacher. She's been working here for seven years. In this school, we have meetings with parents every term. And we're getting good feedback. They tell us that we have a modern approach and that we have adapted to changing lifestyles. On television today, we see a lot of Katoi setting a good example. And parents understand that we are quite capable of teaching their children. No problem at all. Tem agreed to take us to his home. He lives in the countryside, about 15 kilometers from the college, in a small hamlet in the middle of rice paddies. This is the family home. At 13, Tem already has her own room. On a dressing table, in plain view, makeup products. And by the door, shoes with heels. There's just one thing Tem doesn't want to leave lying around. What is it? They're contraceptive pills, for women, but we use them to get more female hormones, and that's how we get our breasts. Tem started taking the pill last month. In Thailand, they are sold without prescription, and many young Katoi buy them freely. Who gave you the idea to take the pill? Poi Trichata, a former Miss Katoi. I saw it on TV. She said she'd started taking her pills in middle school, when she was 12. She said that was what had made him so beautiful. Poi Trichata is the star model we filmed during her photo shoot. Could the media coverage of third sex beauty queens be one explanation for the large number of very young Katoi in Thailand? Tem hasn't yet told his family that he's on the pill. His parents, rice farmers, still haven't fully accepted the fact that their child will become a Katoi. For her father, in particular, the subject is still very painful to talk about. After a hard day's work in the rice fields, Tem's parents agree to talk to us at dinner time.
I did everything I could to prevent it. I even burned his clothes. It didn't change a thing. Should I continue to stand in the way of his happiness? As long as he becomes a good person, I'm fine with it. If he conducts himself well, has a good job, I'm not totally old-fashioned about it. I accept modernity. I can accept that. Tem's father seems to be resigned, but his mother is still resisting. I'd like him to be a real man. I don't want him to become a katoi. I want him to be a strong man, not effeminate. I understand them. They suffer because of me. But I don't know what to do. I'm unhappy for them, that I am the way I am. But I'm glad they accept me anyway. Once a week, Tem and his college Katoi friends meet up at the night market in Sisiket, the only large town in the area. Their favorite pastime is shopping. I'd like this dress. We'll bargain 10 baht less. Will it fit? The teenager is determined to see his transformation through to the end. He will continue to take the pill and plans to change sex as soon as he can afford it. But what are the risks for young people taking female hormones from the age of 13? In Thailand, some people are starting to worry. Nadi is one of the country's leading figures in the homosexual cause. He believes that the system has run out of control and that today, transsexuals are in danger. Without having doctors' knowledge, let the boy, lady boys buy things that they want to buy easily, then can cause a lot of problem in the future. And the health of all these lady boys will become very bad. Nadi wants to show us how easy it is to get hormones without a prescription, at any pharmacy. I would like to buy some contraceptive pills. Do you have any? Under the pharmacist's counter, the three leading products used by Katoi to alter hormone dosages. These include the contraceptive pill, but also injectable versions of female hormones. And this third product, a mysterious drug. Actually, this one is used for the cancer of prostate gland. But the ladyboy use it to reduce the male hormone. A cancer drug to inhibit testosterone production. Here, it is available over the counter. The only safeguard is a simple sign behind the counter. It says that if the Katoi abuse this product, they'll find themselves in the shoes of a 40-year-old man with a male hormone deficiency. You can find a list of symptoms here. Insomnia, excessive sweating, inability to concentrate, mood swings, depression, fatigue, weight gain, loss of sexual desire and impotence. And all this affects their life expectancy, doesn't it? Yes. Why? They don't live as long. It's all because of this hormonal imbalance, which affects the bones. Yes, on blood vessels too. The pharmacist knows that taking hormones can affect the life expectancy of his young boys. But that doesn't stop him from continuing to sell them. Every month, he serves around 30 transsexual customers. Do you ever say no to them? No, it's a store. We're here to sell. They have money to pay. So you sell to them? 
Yes. Yes, that's normal, <laughs> isn't it? I think that the government have to set up the new way of dealing with all these kind of drugs for the lady boy to make them safer. They need, they need this, but they need information too. In Thailand, there are no statistical studies on the dangers faced by Katoi in their quest for femininity. And yet, the transsexual beauty business is booming. In recent years, Bangkok has become the world capital of sex change surgery. Clinics even advertise in newspapers, and offer a la carte operations. Like this ad, for example, which features liposuction and facelifts, and, at the very top of the list, a sex change for $1,625, 1,300 euros. In the capital, some 20 establishments carry out the operation on an almost daily basis. The up-and-coming clinic is Dr. Camel's, a brand new building. Inside, the atmosphere is more that of a luxury hotel than a hospital. Smiling welcome, designer decor and flowers on every floor. Even the entrance to the operating theater is reassuring. And that's the clinic's greatest achievement. Poi Trichata, her again, the transsexual supermodel. Her plastic surgery is flawless. She owes it to this man. Hello, doctor. Hello, Poi. How are things? Dr. Camel, the surgeon who operated on him. For Poi as for all Katoi. This operation is considered a new birth. The doctor is like a second father to me. He turned me into a complete, finished person. Some people think that to want a sex change, we must be crazy or disabled. But it's the opposite, changing gender makes us complete beings. Since I had my sex change, my life has improved and I no longer feel handicapped. For me, gender reassignment isn't plastic surgery, it's healing. Dr. Camel operates on around 100 katoya a year. He hopes to quadruple this figure over the next few years, thanks to growing demand in Thailand and from customers abroad. I want our hospital to become a world reference in this field. I also want our equipment and our specialists to be up to the highest international standards. That's how patients from all over the world will want to come to us for surgery. This morning, a Japanese patient enters the OR. Dr. Camel will remove her genitalia, then reconstruct a female sex with a vagina and clitoris, preserving the nerve endings. Sexual pleasure is apparently guaranteed. Total cost of the operation at this top-of-the-range clinic, 7,000 euros. But few Thai people can afford luxury clinics like this one. So most turn to establishments with much lower standards. Right in central Bangkok. On a street next to the soup stalls, a storefront that is indistinguishable from the other small stores in the area, apart from the words, sex change, on the window. Inside, there are no immaculate waiting rooms or luxurious decorations. Welcome to the least expensive cosmetic clinic in the country. At Dr. Thep's, the sex change veteran. We, we all 
We opened 25 or 30 years ago. I never thought it would work so well. In the beginning, we had very few operations. And then there were more and more people. We can't push out the walls, so there's very little room to work. This is my little office. Then there's a consultation room, where we receive patients. And this is the room where we all eat together. The staff and I. And back here is where we put patients after operations. It's practical, because there's a sink and we can clean their wounds. The patient of the day is B, a 37-year-old Thai man. Why are you here? I want the doctor to do his best to make me a woman. B is emotional. He's been saving for his sex change for four years. 65,000 baht, or 1,200 euros, almost six times cheaper than at the luxury clinic. Okay, here we go. But at this price, there's no time to linger. This is the first time Dr. Tep has met his patient. He'll settle for a few questions. Good. So, how long have you had long hair? It's been a long time. Have you wanted to be a woman since you were a child? Have you ever had a boyfriend? Yes, but we're separated. No girlfriend? No. Have you ever slept with a girl? No. Okay, then there's no problem. For Dr. Tep, this interview is enough. For the past three years, a law has required two psychological aptitude certificates before an operation can be performed. If the patient presents them, all the surgeon has to do is carry them out. I don't have an elevator. You have to walk up. Off to the operating room upstairs. At the entrance, hygiene standards are a little unusual. B is simply invited to rinse his feet in the toilet. And here's the operating theater. For now, none of the nurses have scrubs. Nor does Dr. Thep, who enters in his street clothes. Another surprise, there are no anesthetists. The surgeon himself performs the injection. She will remain semi-conscious during the operation. She'd like to sleep. But if you talk to her, she'll respond. It's a bit special, isn't it? Is it a unique process? Most doctors don't like it. They knock out their patients. It's true that there is a risk. But if you're good at it, you don't need to put the patient completely to sleep. I'm so happy to be here. You see, she says she's very happy. The operation begins. And indeed, the patient is not completely asleep. Uh, it's good, it's good. A little extra anesthetic. And the operation can continue in a surprising atmosphere, to say the least. Mm. Plastic Flowers is the anthem of Tai Katoi. They all sing. It's an anesthetic that puts you in a good mood. Each time, 
I get a song. The Chinese, singing Chinese and the Westerners in their languages. The procedure will last three hours. It's twice as fast as at Dr. Camel's luxury clinic. Is it over, doctor? Yes. Here, each sex change ends with a surprising ritual. Welcome, little girl. Welcome, B. Thank you. <coughs> That's what we always do. We wish him a happy birthday. We learned this tradition from our former patients. They mark their transition from a male to a female body. Today is the day she becomes a woman in her own right. She's happy. Her life has changed. It's like a rebirth. In 25 years, Dr. Thep has operated on over 2,000 katoi, and the latest news is that his patient B is doing wonderfully well. But this booming business also has its victims. Few are willing to talk about it. Direction Koh Tao, an island in southern Thailand, much sought after by tourists for the beauty of its waters. We have an appointment with the owner of this small souvenir store near the beaches. Ek is one of the few Katoi to openly criticize the sex change business, as the operation shattered his life. I don't think about it all the time. Otherwise, I'd go crazy. But in the beginning, yes, it was all I could think about. I was a young man capable of sexual pleasure and the operation deprived me of it. I thought about it all the time. Ek experienced her operation in a major Bangkok hospital as a mutilation. That was 16 years ago. Since then, she's never had another orgasm. I no longer have any sexual desires, nor any pleasure. Today, I tell myself that I should never have changed sex. The new generation of Katoi should really think long and hard before undergoing surgery. Ek believes that she was not sufficiently informed about the risks of sex reassignment and that surgeons downplay the side effects of such an operation. When you pay for this kind of operation, you have the right to be informed. It's not the same as castrating a pig, cat or dog. Are there many like you? Yes, there are a lot of them. Today, it has become a fashion statement. Everyone wants an operation. We're likely to see more and more discount operations. I think people really need to be better informed. But in Thailand, those who criticize the systematic use of hormones and surgery are outweighed by the glamorous images of Katoi as queen for a night on television. In Pattaya, it's the big night at the Tiffany Cabaret. The election of Miss International Queen, the most beautiful transsexual in the world, will begin in a few minutes. Among the crowd are creatures whose gender is sometimes unclear. Backstage, alongside the other contestants, we find Sammy, the Thai candidate. Tonight, she's obviously the local media's favorite. My motivation today is to make my parents proud of me. 
I represent the third sex, and I want to show that I have my place in society. I'm doing it for my parents, I want them to be proud of me. Among the audience, a little to the side, Sammy's parents. They came from the north of the country and traveled 15 hours by bus to support her. I'm very happy to be here. I really want my child to succeed. I spoke to Sammy on the phone this afternoon. I told her, be brave, be focused on the stage, Sammy is ready, she has worked very hard for this contest. She represents Thailand. She can be proud of herself. We're very proud of our child and what she's doing. In the audience, there's also Sammy's coach, who taught her how to parade. Kwong has already spotted his leading trio. I think Miss, um, Miss Chili, uh, Thailand, number five, and number three, Philippines. Yes. You have to look in for the fourth contestant. Is she very perfect? They are very perfect, yeah. <laughs> this is Miss Philippines, one of Kwong's most feared candidates. The danger could also come from Miss Sri Lanka, who looked very pretty this evening. That was my ambition. My ambition to was to become a woman. So, and here I am today, today, as a woman. I'm a woman. Do you, like Do you love the person you've become? Yes. yes. She's very pretty. She's very pretty. Prettier the than the little I boy I was in another past. life. Estelle, the French candidate, prefers to keep a cool head. Prognosis? No, there's no point in making predictions. We're not inside the judge's head, so there's no point. No, we'll see and may the prettiest one win. The show begins, broadcast live on one of Thailand's biggest TV channels. Good evening. Good evening, Thailand. It's like the Miss France competition, a big popular show, with a succession of cabaret acts and fashion shows. Last year's winner, a spectacular 1.90 meter Korean, opens the ball. Then it was the turn of the 23 candidates to make their first appearance in evening gowns. Of course, Sammy's parents in the audience have eyes only for their daughter. Kwon the choreographer hopes to influence the jury with his cries. The jury is made up of fashion and beauty professionals, and includes an old acquaintance, Dr. Thep, the veteran of low-cost sex changes. The surgeon is one of the evening sponsors. The name of his clinic is even displayed above the presenter's heads. The show will last an hour and a half. And the highlight of the show is the swimsuit fashion show, the test that will decide between the candidates. As she learned in rehearsal, Sammy rips off her scarf and flashes her best smile. But her performance was overshadowed by the next contestant, Miss Lebanon, more energetic, more determined, sexier. Oh my god. She's so perfect for the swimsuit. She has she 
make a surprise for the audience. She puts the something black. She's very perfect for Lebanon. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think she wins. <laughs> we are about to name the new Miss Kwong is right to worry. For although Sammy has been selected as one of the three finalists, she is flanked by the Nigerian and the formidable Lebanese. The Miss International Queen 2011 is number 5, Miss Thailand. Thailand have been waiting four years to win this competition. Photographers and cameras flock to the new star. I'm very happy. It's the happiest day of my life. I'm happy for the Thai people. Tonight, I represent the whole of Thailand. I think people are happy and proud of me and my victory. On the sidelines, the new Mrs. parents are emotional and don't yet dare approach. Tonight is a proud moment for my family. I'd like to say something to parents with Katoy children. Please take care of them. Guide them on the right path. You can take my Sammy as an example. She's well-behaved, drug-free, and doesn't do anything illegal. She's a good child for her parents. We're proud of her. A new life begins for Sammy. She pocketed $10,000, the equivalent of three years' average salary in Thailand. But above all, she's going to make her dreams come true, appearing on TV, on the cover of magazines and embodying the image of the ideal woman. The land of the Katoi has finally found its new queen.